Those who happen to be in the have not category and those who happen to be stuck down at the bottom were left to fend for themselves. And so therefore, as a consequence, our current president has a fight that is on his hands. He has a fight that is on his hands because he declares that I don't just want to have great health care for my family and my children just because I'm sitting in the White House. But I will not stop fighting until everybody is able to afford health care in the United States of America. And the reason that he's fighting so hard because he's leveling the playing field. In other words, he's taking from those who have and giving to those who don't have. He's taking from those at the top and giving to those at the bottom, which furthermore suggests to all of us New Rising Star that great leaders don't mind leveling the playing field. Because if in fact you were going to have great leadership, great leadership does not just look out for the people who happen to be at the top of the pile, but great leaders look out for the people who happen to be at the bottom of the pile. Great leaders do not just look out for the people who have, but great leaders look out for the people who don't have. And can I pause to tell somebody that the greatest example of great leadership is not Barack Hussein Obama, but the greatest example of great leadership is Jesus the Christ son of the living God because ladies and gentlemen when I read the Bible all throughout the Bible Jesus is always on the side of the underdog Jesus is always on the side of the oppressed Jesus is always on the side of those who don't have this is why Jesus declared in Luke chapter number 4 starting with verse number 18 that, that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me number one to preach the gospel to the poor he wouldn't be preaching to the poor if Jesus didn't care about poor people he he says he's anointed me to heal the brokenhearted he wouldn't be healing the brokenhearted if he didn't care about your broken heart I, I came to tell somebody this morning I don't care what you are going through right now but Jesus cares about your broken heart Jesus cares about the tears that you cry he he cares that you've been pacing the floor at three and four o'clock in the morning all night long trying to get a prayer from earth up to heaven his ears are open and he hears the cries of the righteous I think you to look at the person beside you and tell him that Jesus cares Jesus says he's anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. He's anointed me to set the captives free. He's anointed me to give deliverance to those who are held captive because Jesus is always on the side of the underdog. Ladies and gentlemen, if Luke chapter number four, starting with verse 18, is not enough for you, follow me to Matthew 25. Jesus says that if you take care of the least of these, you've done it unto me. Watch this. He says that if you feed the hungry, if you give water to the thirsty, if you clothe the naked if you visit the sick if you visit those who happen to be in prison God says whenever you do this to the least of these you've done it unto me because Jesus cares about the least of these and ladies and gentlemen the problem with many of us in 2014 is just because we can drink from the same water fountain as white people now and just because you're able to drive your nice car and live on a certain side of the neighborhood and you think that you made it but just because you reached the middle a middle class status does not mean that everybody around you has reached that same status you ain't made it till everybody on your road makes it you ain't made it till everybody inside of your family makes it you gotta learn how to care about the least of these you gotta learn how to care about the least of these and you gotta make up inside of your mind that I will not stop until everybody makes it Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but I don't just want deliverance for myself, but I want deliverance for my whole family. I don't just want deliverance for myself. I want deliverance for my entire church family. I don't just want deliverance for my church family. I want deliverance for these yet to be United States of America. I don't just want deliverance for these yet to be United States of America. I want deliverance for the entire world. And can I pause to tell somebody, if you come back at 1130, you'll come to the understanding that deliverance is not up to the president. Deliverance is not up to the city council. It is not up to the mayor. 
it is not up to the Birmingham City School System but if in fact we are going to see justice roll down like rivers of water it is up to the church because God said that if my people you obviously don't know who you are he said that if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then when I hear from heaven I'll forgive their sin and God's going to heal the land but tell somebody it starts with his people your problem is that you keep waiting on the justice system to do something and the justice system has disappointed us time after time after time you keep waiting on the president to do something and when he don't do what you want him to do he disappoints you time after time after time instead of you waiting on everybody else get your lazy behind up and do something yourself I might not be able to touch the whole world but I can bring the corner and the street and the house that I live in and the schools my children go to can I pause to tell somebody that great leaders level the playing field for everybody Jesus did not just die for those who have but Jesus died for those who did not have. John chapter number 3 verse number 16 you learned it and Sunday school 101 for God so loved the world. He didn't so love just black people. He didn't so love just white people. He didn't so love just poor people. He didn't so love just rich people. He didn't so love just those who live in East Lake, Brown Springs and Gate City but he said that I so love the world and this is how much that I love the world that I gave my only begotten son that whosoever believeth in Jesus Jesus and believes that his story can rewrite my history shall have everlasting life. Now you sitting in here at New Rising Star acting like you don't have a piece of your history that you want God to rewrite inside of your life. But for those of us who can be real inside of the church and take off the church mask you can stand to your feet and testify preacher straight up I ain't always been inside of the church but I got some parts in my life that I'm not proud of that Jesus Jesus, I need you to rewrite it before December the 31st. God can rewrite your history.